there are three types of budget problems which we are supposed to solve that is the sales budget flexible budget and cash budget pv ratio is always represented in percentage now whenever we go with bp volume it is all what units calculate total variable cost then you are supposed to add your fixed cost Hello everybody, a warm welcome to one and all. I'm Abhilash Chandra from the Department of Commerce and Management in Vithyashram First Grade College, the Temple of Excellence. Welcome to all the students for the model question paper. Now here when we go with model question paper, what exactly that is? We should know the syllabus and accordingly the syllabus, the University of Mysore have designed the questions for us. So example, when we go with the syllabus here, we have six chapters, namely from the introduction to the standard costing. If you go with that, the first chapter is introduction. Second is marginal costing. The third is relevant cost. Now here you will actually get more of the questions like make or buy decisions. Then you have something called the foreign order, accept or reject. Then we have analysis of financial statement, budgetary control and standard costing. Just to give you a hint of what exactly these terms are the first one when i when we go with this introduction what is that we learn now in introduction we have a kind of a concept what is that that is difference between cost accounting and management accounting difference between financial accounting and management accounting limitations and importance of management accounting so they give a entire concept about management accounting the second one is marginal costing where we are supposed to calculate pv ratio margin of safety break even point and so many other calculations which helps to find the marginal costing and the marginal cost next we have as relevant as i told you that is we have make or buy decision for in order accept or reject then we come to the analysis of financial statement where we have gone with three analysis of financial statement that is comparative statement common size statement and then we have trend analysis when we come to budgetary control there are three types of budget problems which we are supposed to solve that is the sales budget flexible budget and cash budget and the last one is the standard costing where we know that there are two things which we are supposed to find one is the material variances and the next one is standard in that we have something called labor variances so we have two one is material another is the labor so if we know the syllabus we also can predict that what are the questions which gonna come in the main examination Vidyashram is very very famous for these predictions and we also tell the students that how to prepare themselves for the main examination. Let's go with the first here that is the part A, B, C the question paper pattern which we are supposed to go. Now when we go with the question paper pattern we know that we have part A, part B and part C. Part A contains 15 marks where you are supposed to write two questions but here the university will be giving you four questions out of four you are supposed to answer how many only two the same way we have something called the part b where you'll be getting five questions you'll get five questions and you are supposed to answer only three questions and the last one is the part c where you'll be getting six questions here and in this six questions you are supposed to answer only four that means here what happens is the part c total in the syllabus we have six chapters now when we have six chapters, each chapter will have one five mark question. We are supposed to only go with four. The same way, five chapters in that three, four chapters in that two. This is what the syllabus and the question paper pattern which you people need to understand. Let's go with the first, that is a part A, that is a 15 marks question. Which question you may get? That is a marginal cost statement question. That is, here you have output they have given Selling price, variable cost, total fixed cost is given. You are supposed to compute. The word is what? Compute A, B, C, D, B, E, P, sales and volume. That means they have given you sales as well as the volume. Margin of safety. Now, margin of safety can also be written as MOS. Then PV ratio. PV ratio is always represented in percentage. Profit when sales are 20 lakh rupees and the sales required to earn a profit of rupees 
3 lakh. So here, when we go with that, what exactly we understand is from marginal costing, there will be a 15 marks question and we are supposed to prepare ourselves for those 15 marks question. So how is that we are supposed to solve? Whenever we get any questions of PV ratios or the marginal costing, the first and the foremost thing which we are supposed to do is what? Calculate PV ratio. How to calculate PV ratio? I'll just give you here the hint what exactly we are supposed to do for the calculation of PV. Let's go with the solution here. The first one, whether it is A, B, C, D, what exactly you people do is whenever you solve any question, first you write is what A or first one or you go with Roman. Don't do this. The reason here is they have only given what? That is the C question, sub question is what? PV ratio. So what is that you should do here is uh, you are not supposed to write anything like this. You are supposed to first go with C. Whichever question they ask, what is that first thing which we are supposed to solve is? We need to solve PV first. So go right here, the sub question C, the answer here is now PV, P slash V ratio is equal to. I told you how to find the marginal costing problems in the sense you need to remember the formula C by S into 100. Now here I told you that contribution over sales into 100 is what it is. We have here selling price and variable cost. So we know that the contribution formula can also be written as selling price minus variable cost per unit divided by selling price into 100 is equal to. Now selling price is how much? We have 10 rupees and variable is 7. So we'll go with 10 minus 7 divided by 10 into 100. Why 100? Because PV is always written in percentage. So here what happens is 3 divided by 10 into 100, 1010. So it is here, we have 30 percent. So what is my PV? My PV is equal to 30 percent. This is how you people need to understand the question and then how you are supposed to solve. This is how you are supposed to solve also. Now we got the PV here. So after PV, what is that we are supposed to find here is in the question we have fixed cost is already given. So the next one here we need to find is what that is question number A, B, E, P sales. Now they have actually given here B, P sales and the volume. So we'll go with the B, P sales is equal to formula is very simple. Denominator is P, V. Denominator is what? P, V. The same way here also when we go with volume, understand volume also. What is the formula here is now B, E, P volume is equal to volume is equal to the same way here go with this what is the middle alphabet e here it is also e so after e what will come is your fixed cost that is f so it is fixed cost so here we'll write fixed cost here also fixed cost now whenever we go with bp volume it is all what units so when i go with unit that is contribution per unit contribution per unit now here what happens is, is equal to, what is the fixed cost? Fixed cost they have only given us 90,000. I'll write 90,000 here. So 90,000 divided by, what is our PV? 30%. So I'll calculate that is what my answer would be. So you need to tell me the answer of what is the BEP sales. Next here is, is equal to, fixed cost is how much? 90,000 divided by contribution per unit. See here contribution per unit. Contribution per unit is equal to selling price minus variable cost per unit is equal to selling prices 10 minus variable cost is 7 is equal to 3 is what is the contribution that is 3 in the sense 3 rupees is the contribution. So here what I'll write is equal to, is equal to whatever the answer comes. This is what you are supposed to write. That is the BEP volume. Next one we have is what? Now this is done. This is done. Next is margin of safety. When I go with margin of safety, understand here, I'll take the next one that is here B. Margin of safety is equal to. Now again here also what? PV is the denominator. What will come in the numerator is the middle alphabet is O. After O in the English alphabet, we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. P in the sense profit. So it is what? Here profit. Profit by PV. But here we have not got what exactly is the profit. So what is that we should do here? See, understand here, whenever I need the profit, 
what is a simple logic is I'll just delete these things for you people. Now whenever I multiply the selling price per unit with the output I get the sales. So sales is equal to 10 into 50,000 is 5 lakh. Variable cost is equal to 7 into 50,000 that is 7 5 is 35 so it is 3 lakh 50,000. 3 lakh 50,000 I just got it. Now what is my fixed cost? My fixed cost is equal to 90,000. So what is my profit question mark? So how to find the profit in the sense? I'll go with a simple C is equal to S minus V. C is equal to F plus P. There are two formulas for contribution. So this is the first formula. This is the second formula. From 1 and 2, what is that I can find is S minus V is equal to F plus P. This is what I can actually write. So here I'll go with the substitution. Now sales in the sense, how much is the sales? 5 lakh rupees. I'll write here 5 lakh minus 3 lakh 50 is my variable cost. 3 lakh uh, 50,000 is equal to F in the sense 90,000 that is 90,000 I'll write here 90,000 plus P. Now here 5 lakh minus 3 lakh 50 is 1 lakh 50,000 so I'll write here 1 lakh 50,000 so this is 1 lakh 50,000 this 90 will come here minus 90,000 is equal to profit. So profit is how much 60,000 rupees profit is how much 60,000 you can write the symbol rupees is equal to profit. So the same way here also when I go with it profit is how much 60,000 rupees divided by PV is how much 30 percentage is equal to what the answer you will get you are supposed to write that is what my MOS is. Now after MOS now here these things I have done profit when sales are 20 lakh and then sales required to earn a profit of 3 lakh rupees I'll just erase these things for you people. Now we have the C is done, now we have D. What is the D? Profit when sales are rupees 20 lakh. That means profit when sales are 20 lakh rupees. So they are asking us what will be the profit if the sales are 20 lakh rupees. I told you you are supposed to use something called Abhilash Chandra trick that is the universal formula which we are supposed to go with it. What is the universal formula is? PV is equal to F plus P divided by S. Now PV we know that it is 30 percent is equal to F we know that it is 90,000 it is there in the problem plus profit I don't know divided by sales they have given that is how much is the sales 20 lakh rupees. Now this I'll shift it that means here we have 20 lakh into 30 percent is equal to the remaining here I'll write it that is 90,000 plus P. Now two threes are in the sense you have six that is here six lakh two threes are six so six lakh this 90 will come here minus 90,000 is equal to profit. So six lakh minus 90,000 is five lakh ten thousand five lakh 10,000 is equal to profit. That means whenever I make 20 lakh has my sales, my profit will be 5 lakh 10,000. So I'm done with the problem. Next one, I'll just erase this particular thing for you people. So when we go with this, profit is also done. Now sales required to earn a profit of 3 lakh rupees. Now sales required. Now this is E. Sales required to earn a profit of 3 lakh rupees. So whenever the profit is 3 lakh, what will be our sale again the same way you are supposed to go that is the universal formula that is your PV is equal to F plus P divided by S. Now PV is how much 30 percent is equal to F in the sense 90,000. They have only given profit as how much 3 lakh divided by sales is how much that is what we are supposed to find. Now sales I'll shift it to here so division becomes multiplication so here S is equal to the multiplication will become division here. So this is what the formation is plus 3 lakh divided by 30 percent and substitute the following and then tell me the answer for sales you can comment 
and I'll be waiting to see that what exactly the sales would be when profit is equal to 3 lakh rupees. It will only take 8 minutes that is a maximum and 7 or 6 minutes that is the minimum which you people will be uh, taking to solve a 15 marks question. So be very careful whenever you solve and here sales is equal to always write the word here rupees that is all the things give a value to it whether it is rupees or unit except BP volumes that is in the unit apart from that PV that comes in the percentage and all the remain that all comes in the rupees things. Let's go with the next problem which is a 15 marks question and the minute I see this question the following are the balance sheet of ABC limited has the March 31st 2016 and 2017 they have actually given what is that we are supposed to find this. You are required to prepare a comparative balance sheet, comparative balance sheet that means what analysis of financial statement this is what the question is from analysis of financial statement. Now they have given something like this equity and liability they have given this is the balance sheet of ABC company limited whenever you get these kind of what is that you are supposed to do is write a heading comparative statement of ABC limited 2016 2017 because they have only given 16 17 whenever you get this question 16 is your previous year 17 is your current year that is what you are supposed to understand and then go forward now when they go with these balance sheets we know the performer of comparative statement common size statement trend analysis all remains same so here what happens is you have reserves and surplus then you have equity share capital then long term loans and current liabilities everything and then the total is what your 5,15,000 for 2016 and 6,50,000 for 2017 the same way you have the asset sites so we need to divide it like liabilities then the assets now in liabilities you have current liabilities and non current liabilities assets you have non uh, current assets and then you have current assets so we are supposed to be very careful whenever we go with comparative what is that we do is we compare 2017 with 2016 or we compare like current year minus the previous year so what is the answer here is when we go with the statement here write the heading that is comparative balance sheet of uh, or at 31st March 2016-2017 the statement is of ABC uh, limited now write the same thing here now here share capital reserve surplus 4,50,000 here we have is what 5 lakh is there 60,000 is there we have 5 lakh and 60,000 I'll show you how to write and how to solve one of the problem here the first thing is you write the particular column and you need to go with first is equity and liability in that the equity comes that is shareholders fund reserves that will actually come later it is a liability in that you have two non-current liability and current liability then total it so when we go with this say example here this you denote that as a this column as a this column you put it as b this is what c and this is what d okay now what exactly you are supposed to do is these things are given in the questions only say example here 4,50,000, 15,000, 50,000 same way it is there 4,50,000, 15,000, 50,000 same thing you are supposed to copy paste right now say here also 5,60,20,70 here see 5,60,20,70 and the Amount is what? 6,50,000. 6,50,000. Same thing we are supposed to go with it. But what is that main thing here is? I'll just erase these things for you. I'll write again here. This is A. This is B. C. And let's go with D. How to write the third column and the fourth column here is? Whenever we go with it. It's a comparative. What is it? Comparative. We compare. So whenever we compare, C is equal to b minus a b minus a now what is b here 5 lakh minus 4 lakh is what we got 1 lakh so you got this particular column every time what is that you should do b minus a 70 minus 50 is how much 20 so you got to know what is the increase what is the decrease whenever there is an increase it is a positive whenever there is a decrease it is a negative you are supposed to put it in the bracket in this you don't have any negative here start solving by yourself 
Later, we have what percentage here? Increase or decrease in percentage. How much it does actually gain or it does like decline. So how to go with this is, we have a formula that is D is equal to, base always will be A. A will always be the base. So here, C by A into 100. Because this is always in what? Percentage. Uh, already we have percentage, so don't put percentage here. Say example here. Let's take this one. Okay, let's take this one. That is how you will write this. How did you get 25 years? D is equal to C by A into 100. C is how much here? 1 lakh. So I'll write here 1 lakh divided by A is how much here? 4 lakh. So I'll write here 4 lakh into 100. Into 100. So your 1s are 4s. So 100 divided by 4 is how much? 25. But this is what 25 percent already we have written percentage here itself. So we'll write only 25. So let's go with the same way. If you go with the next one, how is that? You got 40 is very simple. 20,000 divided by 50,000. How much is it? Like 20,000 you have. So let's take this 20,000 here. Let's go with 20,000 divided by 50,000. 50,000 is equal to that is 0 0.4 into 100. Into 100 is how much? Into 100. So 0 0.4 into 100 is equal to 40 percent. So it is 40 percentages here only. So this is how you people need to solve the problem. After that, we have assets. Again, the asset side also same. Here we have 2 lakh, 1 lakh 50, 1 lakh 65,000. So here also you go with the question 2 lakh, 1 lakh 50, 1 lakh and then 65. Total is how much? 5 lakh 15. Same copy paste. See, the entire problem here, what is that you should do is you should know that whether the question is arranged properly. If it is not arranged, we need to arrange it. And then we'll go with what? Taking the question, putting in the answer. Only the thing is we need to compare. That is called the comparative statement. So this is what the solution for the comparative statement that is analysis of financial statement. The next problem when we go is in the part A, we have here the standard cost card. What is the word? Standard cost card. If you have not seen the sessions of the standard cost, please do watch the standard cost here. I have given you all the tricky tricks of Abhilash Chandra where you will be able to answer each and every question properly. So here, whenever you get a standard cost card, that means what? Tricky things is given there. We are supposed to just take it, right? So here they have given material. They have given uh, material, labor, actual data is given. That is the actual. Here in actual, you have here materials and then you have here labor. Now later is a calculate material variance and labor variance they have actually given to us. That means three material variances and three labor variances. So I told you how is that you are supposed to prepare for these things. I'll just erase this for you people. The minute you get these questions, what is that you should do is don't get panic. That is the first thing which you people need to do is how is that you will solve this? You go with the solution here. First thing, let's go with material. So for material, what is that I'll do is I'll make a big box here. I'll write two things which is very very necessary for us to know one is standard so standard quantity and standard price actual quantity and actual price now if i know sq sp aq ap i'll only start with the formulas so first i need to know these things so what is that i'll do here is let's here only we'll just write this here we have the same format sq SP. Here we have AQ and AP. Now please watch the sessions of uh, standard costing. You will get all the details very easily. Now SQ means what? Total raw material is what the company had decided. That is the standard quantity. AQ in the sense actual quantity used to prepare the finished goods. That is again raw materials. Now here they have said Material. First you take material, then you go with labor. 
standard price rupees 10 per kg the word itself is what standard price what is it 10 per kg done 10 we have written next standard quantity per unit is 10 kg that means to manufacture one unit they took 10 kgs this is how you are supposed to understand the question so i told you what is sq sq is equal to sq is equal to standard quantity of actual output actual output see in the question paper itself what is the actual output now units produce actual output is how much 500 units so for one unit we have taken 10 kgs for 500 units how much cross multiply the question should always come down so it is how much 500 into 10 500 into 10 divided by 1 so it is how much 5000 kgs 5000 kg so i'll write here 5000 next sq is done sp is done now here actual data come to the actual because standard we have taken these two we have taken material done nf now it's all labor we are, we are not supposed to touch labor right now actual material use they have only said actual material use is how much 5500 so i'll write here 5500 now they have said actual material cost now i'll just erase these things for you people the same way is what you are supposed to calculate for each and everything what is ap actual price means for 1 kg how much is what we are supposed to calculate so that what is it actual material use is what 5500 kgs we have used and we have paid actual material cost we have paid how much 24750 rupees we have actually paid so what does ap means for 1 kg how much did you pay so for 550 kgs i have paid this much so for 1 kg how much again cross multiply the question mark will come down this will go up so that is 24750 divided by 5500 zero zero cancel now take your calc here now go with this 2475 divided by 550 is equal to 4 rupees 50 paisa so it is how is equal to is equal to 4 rupees 50 paisa this is what thing so i'll write actual price is how much 4 rupees 50 paisa now what is that we are supposed to do start calculating material variances now we have these kind of a boxes i've already done this i'll just erase it now now we'll go with the material variances material variances now what are the material variances we have is very simple right like this this is a b and then we have c now a c p u is what you are supposed to write c p u here you write material variance what is it material variance material variance material variance so what is it material cost variance material price variance and material usage variance is equal to is equal to is equal what are the things we have we have something called sq we have sp we have aq we have ap we have so the same way how to remember the formula also i have given you sq into sp minus aq into ap go through the videos you will understand how to remember this also i'll just tell you here itself what exactly you are supposed to do is block the entire here we have aq write this aq here aq into so quantity has come out what should come in as price should come that is standard will come from done again block this aq what is that you have is sp you have just take it here you write it sp price has come out what should come in quantity should come in what will come first standard will come minus aq this is what you are supposed to now you know what is sq sp you know aq you know ap you know you are supposed to solve the uh, problem and then you are supposed to give me the answer in the youtube i'll be there to check whether it is right or wrong how to substitute is very simple what is that we have done is we have taken the sq so sq is 5000 sp is 10 so here you will write how much 5000 into 10 minus 
Then here 5500 into 4 rupees 50 paisa. So is equal to. Now substitute you will get. Denote that in rupees. Because all material cost variance, price variance, usage variance. It is all in rupees. Next here what is that we have. The same way we are supposed to cal calculate for labor. We are supposed to calculate for labor. When we go with labor here understand. We have taken material. All these are done. Now actual material is all done. Now whatever is the remaining is our labor. So again prepare the box. Here you have standard hour standard rate. Actual hour actual rate. Now how to remember material QP question paper. Here how to remember labor is HR Rithik Roshan. Let's go with here. Now labor they said standard rate. They have only given what? Standard rate is equal to 20 per hour. So 20. So rate is always for 1 hour how much? So here R set per unit. That is for 1 unit. The laborers are taking 20 hours. So how is that you will write? SH is equal to standard hour of actual output. Actual output. So actual output is how much here? 500 units. So for 500 units, how much they have taken? Again cross multiply. So it is 500 into 20 divided by 1 is equal to 500 into 25 twos are is 10. So you have how much here? That is 1, 0, 0 here. 1, 2, 3. So 10 here. 10,000 is your standard hour. How much you have? Standard hour is 10,000. Now this is done. Labor is all done. Now actual. Actual hours worked. Actual hour. They have only said 12,000. Actual hour is how much? 12,000 done. Now they have given actual labor cost is how much? Now I'll just erase this for you people. Now see this is how you people need to solve each and everything. Everything is easy. Only if you have watched the videos, you will understand if you are starting your own business, you will understand that these are the things which you are supposed to practice when you are giving the wages to your employees and the laborers. Now here what happens is 12,000 hours, 12,000 hours, they have worked actually. And how much actual labor cost is how much? 96,000. So 96,000. So what does this AR means is for one hour how much they have paid? So for 12,000 hours they have paid 96,000. For 1 hour, how much? Again, cross multiply. So, 96,000 divided by 12. Divided by 12. That is 12,000. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. 12 and 96 in the sense, how much is it? Like uh, 12, 8 is 96. So, let's go with this. 12 into 8 is equal to 96. So, we have 8. 12 ones are 12. Eight, so we have how much? 0, 8. The actual rate is how much? 0, 8. So this is for the material here. Now we will go with the labor here. Labor. Variances. Variances. Now again A, B, C. What is that you should do is? Just write C, R, E. Don't you feel it's like creative C, R, E? Now, labor variance, labor variance, labor variance, labor variance is equal to, is equal to, is equal to. What to do? LCV, SH into SR minus AH into AR. Same way, block it, AH. Here, H has come, what should come in? R, standard will come for first, done. Now, here, SR. SH minus AH. To know that whether your answer is right or wrong, the verification we call this as a verification. That is LCV is equal to LRV plus LEV. That is what you are supposed to do. Here for the material also, the verification if you go LCV is equal to the sum of two LPV plus M U V. This is how you are supposed to go with.
So very simple. If you get the verification correct, your answer is all correct. The material is done, labor is also done. Next one we have is a problem. Now that is a 15 marks question called flexible budget. Now we have a flexible budget here like this. That is the following information at 50% capacity is given. That is whatever they have given is all 50%. You are supposed to forecast the profit and the loss at 70% and 90%. They have given in the question 50%. We need to calculate for 70% and 90%. Whenever we go with flexible budget, the formula is very simple. here. We need to estimate whether profit or losses. So what it does? C is equal to S minus P. We know that. C is equal to F plus P. Also we know that. From both S minus V is equal to F plus P. Correct? We have done the statements here only, right? So what happens here is I need to only know profit. That means what? S minus V minus F is equal to P. S minus V minus F is equal to P, profit. If I am getting profit or loss. So what is the format of flexible budget if you go with that? Very simple. Calculate variable costs, one side. That is your total variable costs. What is that you should do? Calculate total variable cost. Then you are supposed to add your fixed cost. You are supposed to add your fixed cost. After that, variable cost plus your fixed cost, we call that as a total cost. Then if you have sales, leave a line and then write sales. Now sales minus total cost is your profit or your loss. That is how you are supposed to go with the flexible budget. Now here, other information is what it has estimated that fixed expenses will remain constant at all capacity. Thank you so much for the information. Fixed expenses should always be constant. That's why they are called as fixed assets or fixed expenses. Now semi-variable expenses will not change between 45% to 60% capacity. It will raise by 10%. I'll come back to this particular thing what exactly it happens. So when we go with this, 50%, whatever it is, write the same. What is that? Whatever it is, first I'll take variable cost. Here see, understand. Direct material, variable cost. Direct labor, variable cost. Direct expenses, variable cost. I have written all variable cost. Next is semi-variable cost. They have only given. Semi-variable cost is what? Repair, indirect labor, other expenses whenever they have given something called administration expenses please understand administration expenses is always fixed cost only when they give you saying that it is a semi variable cost or semi fixed cost then we are supposed to take that in the semi variable also and semi fixed also now fixed expenses there are three one two three so what is that we have done here is we have taken all variable cost variable cost variable cost semi variable cost semi variable cost semi variable cost added we call total variable cost now here what is it for 50 percent these many for 70 percent how much in the sense for 50 percent the calculation is like this for 50 percent it is 2 lakh rupees for 70 percent how much question mark will come down so the combination is like this 70 into 2 lakh divided by 70 into 2 lakh divided by 50. If you do that, you will actually get 2 lakh 80,000. So how is that? It is very simple. Let's go with the calculation here. 70 into 2 lakh is equal to divided by 50. So 2 lakh 80,000. So we got here 2 lakh 80. The same way you are supposed to do for everything but when it comes to semi variable cost now they have said something what is that they have said is semi variable expenses will remain constant or it will not change 45 to 60 percent but here we have how much 70 percent how much it will change it will change what will raise by 10 percent will raise by how much 10 percent between 60 to 75 percent that means what is that we should do here is here we have what 1 lakh 1 lakh 50 and 90 so they have given this adjustment that 10 percent it will increase so 1 lakh 10 percent is how much that is 10,000 so 1 lakh plus 10,000 is 1 lakh 10,000 
one lakh fifty thousand is there plus ten percent that is fifteen thousand. So one lakh fifty plus fifteen is what one lakh sixty five thousand. That is how you are supposed to increase it. And uh, they have only said that fixed expenses or the fixed expenses fixed cost that that will not change. So seventy thousand, seventy thousand. Then here also seventy thousand. Later calculate, you will get total cost, and then we have something called sales here. Sales is how much here? That is here only they have given saying that the estimated at seventy percent capacity sales is thirteen lakh. The same way here when we go with that, what is that we have got is thirteen thousand, fifteen thousand sales minus total cost. If it is positive, that is my profit. If it is negative, it is my loss. Here I got loss. Here I got profit. Here also I got profit. This is what the flexible budget is. Watch the videos of flexible budget. You will get all the answers of this question. Next we have is the part B. Now in this they have given the first thing is the theory that has list out the difference between fixed budget and flexible budget. The minute you have anything, you are supposed to prepare columns. What is that you should do? You need to prepare columns. First is what they have given called fixed budget. Then here I'll write here flexible budget. So what is fixed budget and what is flexible? The word itself says what it can be altered. The word it says fixed means it cannot be altered. Like that you are supposed to go with ten marks is it. And if you have watched the video, you will know that what is the difference between fixed budget. And the flexible budget here. Whenever we understand these things, what the mistake you people do is you write only five points here: A, B, C, D, and E. So you think that here I have written five points, here I have written five points. Total it is ten points. So they'll give me ten marks. No, it is not. You are supposed to go with ten points. That is here ten points. The difference ten points. Only then you will get how much ten marks. Next question here we have is list out the difference between cost accounting and management accounting. Same way, what is that you should do is again go with the same. Here you will write cost accounting. Here you will write management accounting. Anything you go with. If you have something called basis, it is very good. That is what it is. Now how many points you are supposed to write is you need to go with ten points each. Say example here when we go with this. Many of the students, what they do is they write like this: cost accounting, management accounting. They'll start A, B, C. We have D, E, F. But here, what happens now? Six points here I have written. So six points here, six points here. They are supposed to give me ten on ten, but they have given me only six points. Why? Ten points is what you people need to write. How much? Ten points each. You are supposed to write. Here, what is the difference here? Is you have not written the basis here. I'll tell you how to write the basis here. So, example, cost accounting. The emergence of cost accounting is mainly due to the limitations of financial accounting. Write the basis emergence. Basis is what the emergence of emergence. This is what the basis. The first basis is what emergence. Say second, the development of cost accounting date back to industrial revolution. Now, what is the basis here? When was it started? Or you can write the basis is origin. Now here, management accounting has developed only in the last fifty-five years. So origin here you can write as a basis. Now cost accounting deals primarily with cost data. What is the basis? Deals deals with you write, and then you can go with management accounting involves in consideration of both cost and revenue. So this is what you need to write. What basis? See here, I have given basis. Write basis. Ten basis. Ten differences. If you have Prepared well, I'll tell you. You can write twenty differences about cost accounting and management accounting. But write ten each. That is all sufficient for you people. Next question we have is the part B. That is here we have the following is the balance sheet of Raj Limited, thirty first three two thousand nineteen. The minute I see these type of question, I know that it is a ratio analysis uh, chapter. What is that? They have asked us calculate current uh, ratio. Quick ratio, inventory to working capital, then debts to equity ratio, proprietor ratio, capital gearing ratio, and current asset and fixed asset. So here, what exactly happens is you need to know the formula of it. So when we go with the formula here, 
Let's write only the formula. Let's not understand how is that we have actually got it. Understand. Current ratio. The word itself says what? Current. So something current it should be, right? So what is this current ratio in the sense? Current ratio is equal to current asset divided by current liability. So we need to understand what is the current assets here we have. So here when we go with current assets here, these things are the assets here. Land and building is what? Fixed. Plant and machinery is just fixed. Now stock is a current asset. Stock is what? Current asset. Current asset. Current asset. Current asset. So 2 lakh plus 1 lakh is 3 lakh. 3 lakh plus 10,000 is 3 lakh 10,000. And then 40,000 is 3 lakh 50,000. So I'll write here how much? 3 lakh 50,000. So I have written here 3 lakh 50. Current liabilities, if I go with it, these are the current liabilities here. That is bills payable is 1 lakh. Sundry credit are is 50. 1 lakh 50,000 is my current liability. So I'll write 1 lakh 50. I'll divide it. I need to go with the ratio. That's why it is is to. What is it? Is to. So when we go with that, that is 3 lakh 50,000. 3 lakh 50,000 divided by. So we have uh, 1 lakh 50,000. I'll just erase this. I'll write it properly here. So you people will get to know what exactly it is. So we have here uh, is equal to 3,50,000 divided by 1,50,000. So here when you go with it, the whatever you calculate, you get actually 2.33. So always the denominator is what? 1. So it is 2.33 is to this is my current ratio. The same way here when we go with quick ratio. What is it? Quick ratio in the sense liquid asset divided by liquid liability. You can also go with what? Quick asset divided by quick liability. Next, inventory to working capital. The word itself is what? Inventory. Inventory divided by working capital. So 2 lakh divided by 2 lakh is what? 1 is 2. One. Working capital, what exactly the working capital is? Current assets minus your current liability. So current asset is 3,50,000. Your current liability is 1,50,000. When you go with it, you will get how much? 2 lakh rupees. Next is debt equity ratio. The word itself is what? That is debt is there, equity is there. What debt in the sense long term debt divided by equity in the sense your shareholders equity. So that is what your shareholders fund. So 4,20 and 2,70. How exactly you got it? Here is 4,20. Debt is what? Your 4,20 is that. And your equity in the sense how much you have here? You have 2 lakh here. You have 40. So here what happens is you have 2 lakh plus in that you have 40,000. In that you have something here 30,000. So we have here 30. 000. So 2 lakh plus 40, 2 lakh 40 plus 30 is 2 lakh 70. That is how we got 2 lakh 70 thousand. Again, you calculate, you get 1.56 is to 1. Next, proprietor ratio. When we go with proprietor ratio, proprietor in the sense the shareholder fund divided by total assets. Now, total assets in the sense here, now we have total assets. What is it? These things, when we go with it, these things, when you go with it, they are the total here. They are what? Total. But assets in the sense, only this side you have assets. What is it? Land and building, plant and machinery, stocks, sundry data, bills receivable, cash bank. All these are your assets. Your total asset is how much? 8,40,000. Never see this. This is not the assets. These are not the assets here. These are the assets. 8,40,000 is your assets. Now I'll go with the assets that is 8,40,000. Already I know that what is my shareholders fund? Shareholder fund is 2,70,000. I'll write it. I'll go with it. Capital gearing ratio is what? Fixed interest bearing security divided by equity share. And the last one is current assets to fix it. If you know the combination, that is for which question, which formula, then easily we can take from each and every problem and then put it there. This is what you are supposed to go with. Next one we have here is... Uh, the part B, next question, Ravi Company Limited, which produces component X, the breakdown, the minute the breakdown cost somewhere, you get it. What exactly those questions are, very simple, that is, go with the question, advise the management whether they will make the product 
or buy what will be your decision if the other supplier offer at 50 rupees per unit see whenever you go with make or buy decision i'll give you a hint here whether you need to make the product or buy the product Whenever I make a product, that means I want to manufacture the product. When will I manufacture the product? When the market has more price and I can reduce price while making the product, I'll go with make. If I cannot, I'll go with a buy. See, whenever this question comes, always understand, never calculate fixed costs or fixed expenses when you decide to make the product because it is always constant. So here what happens is, 20, 10 direct expenses is 5, fixed expenses, don't take fixed expenses. So here 20 plus 10 plus 5 is how much? 35. 35. Now what is that the question says is, the same is available in the market at 40 rupees given an insurance of regular delivery. Now if I make it as 35, if I buy it as 40, now you only tell me what is that I should do. Should I make the product or should I buy the product? Now there is something called component X no? Now, if I make component X, it is 35 rupees because I need to subtract fixed expenses. So, I have not taken fixed expenses. I have deleted fixed expenses. The making price is 35. If I buy it as 40, now you tell me the answer for A. The answer for A is very simple here. Answer A. I will make the product. What is that I will do? I will make the product. Next question after A. What will be your decision if the other supplier offer at 50 rupees per unit? See here. Next, B. If I make, it is how much? It is 35 rupees. If I buy, it is 50 rupees. Now again, you tell me, what is the answer for the B? The answer for the B is also what? I will make the product. Very simple. You are supposed to give conclusion. Now here what is that you will do? If I make it as 35, if I buy it as 40, hence or therefore I will make the product because every one unit I will be saving 5 rupees. But here what is that you will write? Every one unit I will be saving 15 rupees is what you are supposed to write. This is what the conclusion of make or buy decision. Next here. Part C, we have that is all theory, key factor, marginal costing, budgetary control, limitations of ratio analysis, standard costing and limitations of management accounting. These things, five marks, many of the students, what they usually do is, they don't write the theory more. If you need to get 80 on 80 or like 100 on 100, what is that you should do is, write your internals properly, get 20 on 20, write your external properly, don't miss out the five marks. Many of the faculties, what they have always done in the classes is they teach how to solve problem, but they don't tell them how to write the theory part. If you people miss out the marks, you will actually miss here. What is key factor? Which chapter it comes? Many of the students, they don't know itself. Marginal costing, what is the meaning of marginal costing? They don't know. You are supposed to write for five marks in the sense, at least you are supposed to write half of the page about that particular content. So example here, I'll take here, we have something called marginal costing. What is marginal costing? Write the meaning and definition of marginal costing. Two marks for your meaning and two marks for your definition. After that, you can actually write even the formulas of marginal costing or where exactly marginal costing is important, is required. What happens if marginal costing is calculated? All those things you can actually write the uses of marginal costing also. That is what you will be actually uh, getting marks of 5 on 5 here. These are the things which we have solved the model question paper here. A uh, very good luck to all of you. If you have any doubt regarding the sessions, please do call us. We are always there to help you. Thank you so much. I'll see you when I see you.